What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Battle Cage. It's your boy, Siphon. I'm coming to you with yet another great video. Now, I know first question is, where you been? Where you been? What's going on? Uh, everything's all right. I just, you know, had some um, things to take care of. Well, first of all, I had to get my health in check. You know what I'm saying? So that's more important than anything. Uh, but now, you know, back in business, uh, how was I doing financially? I did actually very good. I got lucky twice in a row, you know. They say lightning doesn't strike twice, but here on Battle Cage, it just keeps on striking and striking money, you know what I'm saying? Uh, say what you want. I had a big boy 25 unit play, play. That's right, 25 units. You heard it right. On Yair Rodriguez, and I don't care what you say, I cashed it. Um, I continued the momentum last week with 12 and a half units on Curtis razor blade is and you can say whatever you want i cashed it and before that i had another nice 10 unit play on uh kakrahmanov i usually don't take the first fight but if your name is kakrahmanov and you're from my country uzbekistan you best believe i'm taking a stab on you so your boy is up 47 and a half units just for these three weeks um so yeah i kind of had to come over here and, and, and just give you some blessings because um, I see some shenanigans going around over over here. You know what I'm saying? So I gotta put some people in check. Uh, but with that being said, let's uh let's talk these fights. You know what I'm saying? Let's go over uh to the task at hand. We got UFC 277, Pena versus Nunes two going down this Saturday, the 30th of this month. Uh, they are fighting from Dallas, Texas, and it's gonna be a banger. We got two title fights. We got the flyweight championship, the vacant championship on the line. Brandon Morano is taking on Kai Kara France. Excuse me. And we have the most anticipated rematch in recent history. Yeah, okay. Come on, Dana. You sold the fight. Really, really good. Um, you can say it's the most anticipated. It's really not the most anticipated. Like, I don't give a damn. Um, I think Amanda Nunes sold out the first time. That's just my two cents on it. Uh, but I do believe uh, the stars are going to be aligned properly because I do think Amanda Nunes is just an animal. And when she's focused, uh, it's just she's just a scary, scary individual. So I believe uh, Julia Penny is going to be getting knocked out. But we get that. We get that in uh, down the line. Let's do just a quick summary uh, not even a summary, just a quick overview, and then we get into individual fights. As I mentioned, we do have the co-main co event. We have uh, Brandon Moreno uh, versus Kai Car France. Now, if I'm not mistaken, it's their second fight. Uh, let me see. This loss was to Brandon Royvel. Let me see when he lost to, um, I believe, I think Brandon Moreno uh, got the upper hand uh, 2019 in December. So it's going to be... Uh, what, 2020, 2021, so three years ago. So uh, since then, Conor Kyle France has been doing work. He never stopped. Took out Tyson Nam. Here's Brandon Royvel loss. He got choked out. Um, but since then, you know, Bonterin, Gody Gomrod, um, just uh, starts the living crap out of him. And um, say what you want. I don't know if he kind of, I think Askar Askarov won this fight. So I don't know, sketchy win for him. But nevertheless, uh, here's a rematch for these dudes. Uh, it's going to be a nice scrap. We're going we, we're gonna to digest it a little bit further. When we cross that line, uh, Pantoja, Perez, nice, uh, good matchup at the flyweight. You know, you got one of the, you know, flying prospects, if you will, at the light heavyweight division, Magomed Ankalaev, who is just in his perfect prime. He's 30 years old. And he's at the cusp of being, you know, the champ, in my opinion. Got every the whole pedigree uh, going for him. Excuse me. We got his new guy, Hamdi Abdel Wahab, which we were going to touch on taking Dante on Maze. Drakkar Close versus Rafa Garcia. Good, good, good scrap. Good, good scrap. Uh, Michael Morales taking on Adam Fugget. Okay. 
uh, basically, he's a forget about it kind of guy. We, we don't got to worry about this guy. Uh, Jocelyn Edwards versus uh, Jin Yoon Kim. Got a couple of things to say over there. Um, Nick Nigger Morano is going to be taking on this new debuting fighter, Ihor Poteria. I think that's how you say it. For now, we're just going to call him Ihor. Uh, and we have a very uh, uninteresting and just down the toilet fight, which I'm not going to be watching. Uh, Orion Kosi versus Blood Diamond. I could care two Fs about this fight, and you should too, from a betting perspective at least. If from a pure entertainment, yeah, I want to see who's the worst um, of, of these two dudes who let us down in the past, uh, or at least, yeah, anyway. So let's guess it's only right to start with this first fight, and we got Orion Kosi taking on Blood Diamond. Um, so by now we are familiar with these guys. Uh, let me just start notating the time. It's just going to help me. Let's do like 5.55. Okay. Orion Kosi, man, comes in with a lot of heat. You know, supposed to be winning the first outing, at least according to what I was thinking. But again, I'm stupid because Philip Rowe was just too much for him as a debuting fight. This is the debuting fight that he should have had, something like that. Um, yeah, and he gets knocked out, rightfully so. Just, there's nothing else to say. Um, in good shape, you know, he's been training with Team Alpha Male uh, as of late. Uh, so I can only, you know, expect him to get better. And then we have this Blood Diamond kind of guy, you know, training with Izzy. You know, they're talking about him as a hard worker. You know, he's out there in the scenes of kickboxing world. Relatively new to the MMA uh, and gets welcomed by Jeremiah Wells and he chokes the living crap out of him, rightfully so. So, who's going to win this fight? I don't know. You guys tell me who's going to win this fight. In fact, let's do this. Make a prediction right now. Orion Kosi or Blood Diamond. For all of you who get it right, I'm going to, whether it's, I don't care if it's just one person making prediction. If one person comments and he makes that prediction, you make the pick. And if you are right, if it's going to be Orion Kosi or Blood Diamond, because I don't know. If you're right, I'm going to take your name, put in the pool. After the fight, once we know the victor, probably within 60 minutes, I'll be able to get the winner. I'll announce the winner right in the comment section. Um, I'll get in contact with you and I'm going to send you a hundred bucks. No cap. Like, because I did so well, you know, I'm up like 40, almost 50 units. Oh, and I'm not even bragging about taking, uh, Lauren Murphy, uh, as a dog, uh, play and Matt Schnell as a dog play. I'm not even bragging about that. And I have proof. Like I was live there. Uh, so I'm not even going to brag about that, but yeah, just big, big boy plays already announced. Um, but make a pick right now. Orion Kosi or Blood Diamond, make sure you think about it because you're basically playing for 100 bucks. You got nothing to lose. Um, enter your prediction in the comment section. Make sure you like the video, obviously. Share it with your friends. Um, and then I'm going to pick a winner. Um, and most likely by next Monday, you're going to have your 100 bucks. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to do with this fight because I could care less about this one. I don't know who's going to win this fight. And um, I wish b good luck to everyone entering this contest. Let's get it, get it. Let's get it, gang. All right, next fight. All righty. Next fight. We got Nick Negger Morano taking on Ihor, debuting fighter. Three-inch advantage for Ihor uh, from Ukraine, Kiev, Ukraine. Uh, three inch reach advantage to Nick. You know they're giving Ihor the the favorite here. I don't know really why that's the case. You know what I'm saying? I mean he's a very dynamic fighter. Definitely a finisher. I mean he got finishes for sure. He has nine finishes via KO, seven submissions, and four decisions. That looks that looks great. Um, professionally. You know, a few hiccups in the beginning of his, um, you know, career, but started climbing. Obviously, the pool of talent. You know, he he's a five-two fighter fighting a one and six, a three and two. He's an eight and two. He's fighting someone who's zero and zero. You know what I'm saying? Uh, a five and six fighter. He's ten and two fighting a debuting fighter. 
uh, in 2018. I mean, there was a lot of fights, though. He's just going out there May, June, again, June, July, August. Uh, August, a week later, two days later, he's literally just fighting, picking up fights, just wants to fight, uh, takes a couple of breaks, I guess, a couple of months of break, because for him, that's, a, that's, that's unusual, fights this dude, 17 and 18, 50-50 split fighter, and he gets a split decision, um, he's 13 and 2, fighting a 0 and 0, he's 14 and 2, fighting a 0 and 3, I mean, that's just disgustingly vomit, disgusting, just disgusting. I'm disgusted. If you're a 16-2 fighter, you should not be fighting an 0-2 fighter, a debuting fighter. Shame on you. Shame on you. He finally fights someone, an 8-0 on the Contender Series. Obviously, very low competition over there, and he gets the ground and pound. Now... So what do I think about this 20-2 record? Because at glance, it looks spectacular. But hell no. I actually don't have respect for this guy. Now, he might be a tough son of a gun. Don't get me wrong. Um, and there's nothing wrong with padding in that record. And I guess that's why you made it into the UFC because it looks spectacular. Uh, plus, you're, you know, Ukrainian. That's not, that's not too bad right now because everybody's feeling sorry for Ukraine. Um... You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. But, man, I have no respect for this guy for fighting this bullshit-ass padding bullshit. No. Now, Nick Nick Nigga Morano, plus 125, who, you know, took out Alexa Kamor split, Ike Villanueva KO, which he, he should have, right? Uh, and Kennedy and Chukwi, say what you want, you know, kind of spoiled my big, big ticket. I had a big boy playing Kennedy and Chukwi, and he kind of spoiled the party. But the, I got to say, you know, he's been in there, you know, obviously, you know, taking an L to this dude right here, um, Sarah Ford, which I don't know how that happened. But anyway, you know, both men are sus. You got a debuting, padded record, son of a gun, who could be legit, right? He, he could be legit. I don't know. Uh, and then you got Nick Nigamirano, who's putting in work. You know what I'm saying? He's actually doing a lot of good stuff here. Um, not his first night out. He's doing work. Um, give me Nick Nigamirano plus money dog because I can't trust Ehor until I see Ehor. You know what I'm saying? So prove me wrong, Ehor, and then I might believe in you. Until then, there's more value in Nick, so I'm going to go with Nick. Uh, I'm interested to, to, to hear what you guys think. Uh, you know, comment in the comment section if you disagree with me. Um, but that's kind of where I'm going to go with, and that's all I got to say. Alrighty, fight number three. We got Ji Yun Kim taking on Jocelyn Edwards at the bantamweight level here. Um, so full disclosure for this fight. Jocelyn Edwards is from Panama. She's fighting out of Panama. I happen to be flying to Panama this Thursday. That's why I'm recording this right now, Monday, so I can give you guys this video. Uh, I didn't want to miss this video because if another day passes, I probably won't record. So, Jocelyn Edwards, Panamanian. I'm going to be in Panama. I'm going to be rooting for the Panamanian girl. Uh, but if you look at the more well-rounder, more developed fighter, it is Jin Yoon Kim, you know, and those three losses, they look terrible, but she is fighting some competition, okay, Alexa Grasso, who's at the top of the food chain right now, Molly McCann, who's, for whatever reason, is like the one of the biggest superstars right now, okay, um, and... Cochera, Priscilla Cochera. Now, you could argue that this is wrong, but I don't know, man. It is what it is. A loss is a loss. Jocelyn Edwards, La Pantera. Okay. Panamanian fighter um, fighting at a King's MMA over here. That's the gym. I'm going to be honest with you. Like I said, I don't trust either one of them, but if you asking me who I'm going to be backing... I'm going to be going with Justin Edwards just because I happen to be in Panama visiting their home country. And I am not going to be going against their 
fighter, okay? Give me Justin Edwards as a, as a slight favorite, minus 140. I will check the odds um, with you guys. So the live odds right now, Jocelyn Edwards. Let me refresh the page. Jocelyn Edwards. Where are you, sweetheart? Right here. So she kind of went up in value. She is minus 140 on Caesars. She's minus 125 at DraftKings. Best value, by the way. Uh, and shout out to DraftKings. Let's take a moment. I will have to, you know, you're going to have to forgive me, guys. Uh, I usually don't do this, but I, I have to. I have to. So the pick is Justin Edwards, just in case you guys didn't know. But, um, yeah, I'm going to do this as a, a little... A little promotion here. I usually don't do this, okay? So, just in case you guys don't know what I've been doing, I've been absolutely slaying on two bookies. On two bookies, sorry. Bet MGM and DraftKings. Now, for some reason, I don't know why, but DraftKings has been taking my biggest bets. I'm talking about 25 plus units, okay? No problem. For some reason... Bet MGM has been limiting me um, with my playing ability for some reason. Again, I don't know. I've been limited to about 7 to 10 units max plays, which I don't like that because, like I said, I just played uh, 25 units on Yair, 12 and a half units on Curtis, and that's courtesy of DraftKings. Now, they do have a promotion here. I'm going to put this in the comment, uh, in the, in the uh, I guess, the about section. Uh, the description, in the description, you click the link, we both get 100 100 bucks. They're doing it. Um, the offer is valid until, I believe, uh, like two more weeks. Let me see. Yeah, like two more weeks. So, if you want a 100 bucks, if you make the deposit, they match it. Uh, sign up with DraftKings. If you're not playing DraftKings... Uh, they giving you that, but not only that. The lines have been absolutely wonderful with DraftKings. I mean, just looking at this girl minus one twenty five. That's the lowest value. Uh, the all the only other one is five D, which I don't even will never play that. But yeah, DraftKings are minus one, at minus one twenty five. That will be the official play for me. I'm probably gonna throw. I'll throw one and a half units on Justin Edwards just because. You know what I'm saying? So if you're feeling froggy and you're going with me, then that's pretty much my only explanation. But I'm just 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 going off the tangent here. But yeah, sign up through uh, DraftKings. Um, not sponsored by any bookies. I told you guys not yet. I wish. So I want to quit my job. But for now, shout out to DraftKings. They've been taking my biggest bets. Uh, Yair and Curtis, they both took those bets. Um, thank you, DraftKings. And um, yeah, I'm going to continue playing my biggest bets with you guys because that's just how it's going to roll right now. So that kind of concludes this fight. Let's go to the next one. Alrighty. In the welterweight division, we got this young dude fighting out of Tijuana, Mexico, nationality, Ecuador. Michael Morales taking on Adam. Forget about it. <laughs> Uh, that's the first thing they, they come, for, I can't stop. For, forget. Forget. Anyway. <coughs> Minus 600 favorite, Michael Morales. Live line. Woof, Michael Morales. You are expensive. Live line, Michael Morales. DraftKings doesn't have him. Minus 650 on Bet MGM, minus 550 on Caesars. Cheapest price is 550 on Caesars, believe it or not. Yeah. Michael Morales, 23 years old, did his thing on the Contender Series. Um, followed, followed up with a TKO against Trevin Giles. And I think he got the goods, got the size. Got the wrestling pedigree really, really toned in. And um, the pick is Michael Morales. Uh, what I'm thinking is you got to look at the 13-0 bracket. 
And we're just going to have to see if the man's a killer. Because if he is, we're going to go for the jugular. And it's 10 KOs, one submission, two decision wins. We're going to go for the jugular. And we're going to say he's going to he's gonna kill Adam Forget. Um, sorry, Adam, but I think you're going to get killed. I'm going to go with Michael Morales in a parlay. And I'm going to go with Michael Morales inside the distance. Once that's available to me, I don't believe it's available. But I'm as I'm talking to you guys, I am clicking this fight right now. Um, let's see. Let's see if it is available. And no, I don't see it, guys. Unfortunately, I don't see it's available. But as soon as that line drops, I'm probably going to be targeting Michael Morales inside the distance against Adam. I, I don't forget about it. You know what I mean? That's it. I mean, you got the wrestling, you got the youth, you got you got everything. You got the odds. Uh, everything is kind of going to your f going against Adam. So I'm gonna go with um. I'm gonna go with M Michael Morales, and I'm not gonna be hating anybody putting him in a parlay. I will say get in, get it now. Um, but everybody's gonna be targeting inside the distance. Fight not going a distance because statistically speaking, that's kind of where this fight is, should be going. That's that's all pretty much all we got to say about this fight. Pick is Michael Morales. Okay, fight number six. We got Drakkar Close taking on Rafa Garcia here. Got to tell you, got a lot of love for Rafa Garcia. You know, he did take two L's here uh, back to back. And nevertheless, to Nassar Hasbrot, that was just bound to, to be just to happen. And against Cruz Gutzmacher, that was also bound to be in the making but he did beat Nitan Levy that was a great great win about seven months ago and against Jenny Ro uh, Jesse Ronson and that was just a spectacular finish uh, via rear naked choke um can he win Drakkar Close I don't know I am favoring Drakkar Close here Drakkar Close was a just a big favorite against Brandon Jenkins and look he knocked him out so you know, to give me Drakkar close at minus 225, I am tempted to take it. Um, I am actually very, very tempted to take it. He is coming from Fight Ready MMA. Um, I believe that's a really decent uh, team over there. Uh, if we look over there, uh, we got the Korean Zombie over there. We got Henry Cejudo. Um, who else? This dude, Haley Alitang. Uh, your boy, Eric Anders, although he's been taken to L's. Um, Marco Madsen is over there, you know, getting some work on. So, you know, J uh, JSP, right? Jonathan Pierce, who just got a really nice win uh, this past weekend. So, Frankie Saints, you know what I'm saying? So, he got some people to Tracy Cortez, Hunter Osher, even though he got two L's. Um, there are people there. That's... That's basically what I'm saying. They have good people there. Uh, it's a pretty decent gym. Eddie Cha, striking coach. You know what I'm saying? So, very good stuff over there. Very good stuff. I like I like the gym. And I like your car close here. I think Rafa Garcia is a tough guy. But, you know, ultimately, you know, he's still very young, which is very surprising. You know, it's only 27 on the, on the brink of being 28, you know, reaching his prime. Mexican fighter, so very, very durable. Very, very, very durable. You guys already know how, how much respect I give to uh, my Mexican fighters. But, yeah, we're going to go with Drakkar Close. And I think Moneyline is probably going to be the pick because we don't want to go crazy. So, Drakkar Close is the pick. And I'm going to write notate it. That's going to be the Moneyline pick. Uh, he might be just a little bit more polished fighter now you know 34 so we're gonna have to get a little bit worried here because it's, it's it's the fade game now uh but i don't i'm not gonna be fading him here yet i think he's just a much better well-polished fighter and don't be surprised if he decides to implement some heavy wrestling against uh garcia in fact let's go to uh espn for some numbers you know i likes me some numbers so uh, the early prelims are in the bag. We're now talking about the prelims here. So, Drakkar Close versus uh, Rafa Garcia. If you look at the stri uh, significant strike landed per minute, uh, we're going to have to go and give the favorite side um, the nod here. Oh, give me a second. Um, okay, let's give the line... 
Come on. Alrighty, so let's give the little arrow. I gotta get a new mouse, man. <sighs> okay, right here. Significant strike. Uh, if you look at the accuracy, again, Drakkar Close is gonna get that accuracy 62.85% versus 43.31%. Um, the takedown, believe it, believe it or not, <laughs> is gonna go to Rafa Garcia. I don't know if he's gonna be taking down. Uh, Dracor close like that. You know what I'm saying? Just, I don't know. I doubt he's going to be taking him with ease like that. Just, I doubt. Uh, but, you know what I'm saying? No disrespect to Mexican fighters. No, dis no disrespect to Rafa Garcia. Nothing but love and respect. But I'm going to be favoring Dracor close here. And um, I think I'm on the right side here. Okay. Next fight. Alrighty. Okay, we got big boys throwing it down. We got Duntel Mace taking on Hamdi Abdel Wahab. Uh, let me line this up for you guys. So this is a big boy scrap. Uh, heavyweight limit at 265. And we got Lord Kong Duntel Mace, 30 years old, 6'6", six 81 six, reach, which is crazy. Taking on a 6'2". And I'm questioning that because some people said he looks like 5'10", 5'11", maybe at most. Um, the Hammer Hamdi uh, Abdel Wahab, uh, Egyptian nationality, okay? So uh, remember that. And he is fighting out of New York. And he is from, um, you know, trained with, with, I believe, Gracie in New York. So he is fighting out of New York. So shout out to New York. You know what I'm saying? I'm a New Yorker. Um he got power and he got wrestling, and um, um, and I gotta be honest, Dante Mace really looked okay in his last outing. Uh, he fought Josh Parisian. Um, he out wrestled him, you know, and was able to secure a crucifix and got the elbows in. So showed me a lot of good work. Prior to that, he beat Rogue Martinez, which he should have. Um, yeah, I think, you know, the evolution of, uh, Dante Mace is good. Um, his, his, um, his cardio is looking better. <coughs> However, Hamdi Abdel Wahab, who happens to have Olympic style level wrestling. Okay. Uh, in fact, he is an Olympic wrestler. Tells me that he can wrestle for days, which is good. But he has power in those hands. And yes, um, 3-0 professional record, okay, doesn't speak volume. But he's been fighting on uh, amateurs, as you can see. And he only sustained one loss. And it was because he got disqualified against Corey Norman due to illegal strikes to the back of his head. So he really didn't lose. He just, he was able to get him down and instead of um, posturing up and going sideways, um, he just got excited and started raining on the back of the head, and he got disqualified. Uh, but besides that, referee stoppage, round one, 37 seconds, unanimous against Justin Smith. At the amateur levels, uh, here's some MMA bare knuckles. He fought Matthew Strickland, whoever that is, 15 seconds, he knocked him out. Uh Connor McKenna, some dude, he knocked him out also, bare knuckle, uh, MMA style at Game Bread Fighting Championship, uh, 33, sec 33 seconds, <coughs> took out him, you know, again, very low level, de debuting fighters, okay, this guy's a de de debutant, uh, here's a professional, a real MMA fight for him, a 4-4 four four fighter, uh, Took, took out this man's leg, okay, leg injury, so that's out of the bag. Tyler Lee, KO, and his recent, he actually fought here is another Matthew Strickland, a debutant in the MMA, and he knocked the fool out again. So, yeah, I'm going to go with this debutant here, okay? It is what it is. Um, he's a fellow New Yorker. He got wrestling, which I absolutely love, and... What else do you want me to say? I think he gets the job done. I, I really like his chances here against Dante Mace. Obviously, Dante Mace is going to come in with more experience. But Dante Mace, you know, he's a big, big dude. I mean, humongous dude, actually. Six foot six. 
Um, but I see a tremendous value on this guy. And if, he, if he plays smart, and I hope he doesn't get clipped. Uh, although, like, you know, you don't see... You don't see Dante Mays really knocking dudes out like that. Yeah, in the Contender Series, but in the MMA, in this game, he hasn't been really knocking dudes' heads off like that. You know what I'm saying? Even Rogue Martinez, he went to the decision with him. And Josh Parisian, that was later in the fight that he was able to get that crucifix. Um, this was uh, round three at 326 mark. So... You got to wonder, you know, he's not really going to be out there slinging leather, whereas the hammer, the hammer is going to be slinging leather. I just hope he's more patient and not too stupid or reckless, but I see tremendous value of plus 125. I believe that's the best odds that I've seen for this guy, and I'll check it right now. So this dude, um, where are you? Abdel Wahab, plus 120, plus 130 at Caesars, uh, perhaps where you want to be. Um, if you're looking for the best value and that's about it. That's like, the, and then unless you're playing like, you know, these bookies, um, bet 365, that actually plus 140, uh, dog money play on him. So yeah, I'm going to go with, uh, Hamdi Abdul, Abdel Wahab. Um, he got power, he got speed. He has the potential to knock this guy out. And he has the potential to out-wrestle this guy. So um, two bonuses. And he's from New York. So public perception, May 71%. I don't know why. I really don't know. Maybe because they're just fading the crap out of him. And um, and maybe maybe the peop the public is right. But I don't know. I'm going to have to go with uh, with with my my New York fellow guy right here. Even though he's not he's not a real New Yorker. Uh, but he is fighting out of New York, so you know he's been living here for for quite some time now, and that's gonna be my pick. Let's move on. Alrighty, we got uh, lightweight 155 scrap Drew Dober taking on Rafael Alves. Um, everything screams Drew Dober. You know what I'm saying? Drew Dober's. Alrighty, so moving down, we got another good fight. Drew Dober versus Rafael Alves taking place at uh, 155. That's a lightweight scrap here. All right, Drew Dober's coming in with a good win against Terrence McKinney. Uh, knocked him out. And Rafael Alves, the Aguiting choke uh, against Mark Casey. So good, good uh, wins for both guys. In the last five outings, uh, let me see. This guy comes in on from the Contender Series. His first bout is against Demir Ismagulov, which is a very tough outing. Uh, he gets a green pass, in my opinion, and then he beats Mark D. Casey. So when he's matched up correctly, he has a chance. Uh, knocks out Naskrat Hasparov. I absolutely knew that was going to happen. He knocks out Alexander Hernandez. That surprised me a little bit. Um... Islam Mahechov, we all knew that was no, not going anywhere. Uh, Brad Riddell, I don't know how he lost that fight, but he did. And he knocked out Terrence McKinney, as I mentioned. My personal perspective is going to be Drew Dober. Um, I just feel like he's a little bit more up there in experience, especially in UFC. He's been around the block a little bit. Uh, if you look at the significant striking lender per minute, we're going to have to go with Drew Dober at 4.4 versus 2.1. Uh, that's very significant, if you ask me. The accuracy, though, is going to be favoring Ra Rafael, Rafael Alves at 50.43% versus 47.27%. So, you know, weigh that out. And then you got the takedown accuracy of 17.78%. Uh, Take it with a grain of salt for the takedown. In a striking bound, hand-to-hand -hand combat, I will be favoring Drew Dorber just ever so slightly. Um, good matchup, good scrap. Um, let's see what happens. I'm going to go with Drew Dorber, but I'm not going to be betting this fight at all. Like, at all. At all. At all. I think you guys got the point. Alrighty. We got Alex Morono, the great white, taking on Matt 
Semmelsberger, Semi the Jedi, at welterweight 170. Let's start with the age, 31 to 21. Pretty closely well matched up. Although Alex Morona is in the brink of being 32, uh, just a month shy. And Smellsberger is about to hit that 30. So it's not so bad. Uh, Alex Morona coming here is a slight dog around plus 130 range. Um, he is the hometown guy. So, uh, like, he's a Texas guy. He's, you know what I'm saying? He's fight of, he's fighting out of Houston, Texas. Um, I don't know. I mean, you may want to think about that. I don't know if, how you approach it. it. It could play a factor in the decision, if you ask me. Uh, the size advantage is definitely going to Matt uh, Semmelsberger, uh, 6'1", you know, physicality-wise, with a three-inch reach advantage. It's going to go to Matt Semmelsberger. 21-7 and seven record is exceptional. Uh, that's something that you got to take a, uh, a closer look at uh, because... Man, I mean, there's just phenomenal, you know, experience that that's going in over here, uh, versus only a ten and three. You know what I'm trying to say? So it's like, you gotta really, you gotta really consider this. Um, now, with that being said, um, do how much do I put weight on that? I put a lot of weight on the experience. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if you look at if you look at Matt uh, Matt Semmelsberger in the last five fights. Uh, Carlton Minus, 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 whatever. Um, he beat him. Jason Witt, he knocked him out. He suffered a loss to Chaos Williams, but he was able to hang with a power, dangerous striker all the way to the end. So that's a very good fight for him. Bounces back against Martin Sano with a KO and against AJ Fletcher, who came in as a 9 0 undefeated fighter here about three months ago. So. You know, you kind of have to favor the younger guy, bigger guy. But Alex Morono is a dog. That's one thing I got to tell you. Because in his last five fights, uh, obviously, Rismi Key, that's easy work right there for him. Uh, Anthony Pettis, I really knew that was going to happen. I knew Anthony Pettis was going to leave with a W. Uh, had a big boy bet, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I probably had about 13 units on um, Anthony Pettis that night. I remember him edging out that win. Um, you know, obviously, he took out uh, Donald Cerrone. Really, really quick work for him. David Zawada, very good work for him. Uh, about nine months ago, a unanimous win. And Mickey Gall. And Mickey Gall actually, excuse me, did a lot of work in that fight. He actually, you know, I think he tried to win that fight. But, uh, you know, Morono comes in with a W. I'm going to go with Matthew Semmelsberger here. You know, I, I think he's just the threat of knocking people out and just finishing. is going to be with uh, Matt Semmelsberger uh, versus Matt, I mean, versus Alex Morono. But Morono is game all day. So I, I am picking Matt Semmelsberger, Semi the Jedi, but I am not confident to play it as of yet. I want to hear the media. I want to see the face-off. I want to see the scales, absolutely. <coughs> and then I'll make my ultimate decision if I want to pull a trigger. As of right now, I'm only picking Matt Semmelsberger, and I'm like 60% confident. Let me see what the public is saying. Um, pretty close, pretty close. Uh, 54 to 46% public perception. Again, that's just public perception. They're not really throwing money on this fight, so I don't know. Ah, you guys want to interpret that. That's just, you know, it's up to your interpretation. For now, we're going to lean Semmelsberger just ever so slightly. Let's take a look at uh, the numbers because we like numbers here. Okay. So Alex Morono, um, pretty even in terms of significant strikes, 5.21 to 5. Um, significant accuracy, 51 to 45. Again, kind of close. You give it a little bit uh, edge to uh, Matt Semmelsberger. And here's your takedown. 100% um, takedown, but he probably just takes about one, uh, goes for one takedown averages per fight. So let's see who takes down who. Um, I am favoring Matt Semmelsberger ever so slightly, but I don't know, man. Anything can happen. This is UFC. UFC. Anyway. Let me know. Maybe you guys want to help me out with this one. I'm, I'm leading Jedi here, you know, just because he's a bigger 
younger, stronger fighter, in my opinion. But that's just about it. Let's go to the next fight, guys. All right, guys. This is a main card now. All right. Big boy time. Light heavyweight. 205. Magomed. Ankalive, who I think is the next champion. Um, minus 500. 17 and 1 record. From Mahechkala, Russia. You know, the Dagestani region over there. 6 foot 3, 75 reach. Physically, they're pretty much the same. Anthony Leinhardt on a three win streak. And he was counted out heavy. Heavy against those uh, against Devin Clark, against Jimmy Crude, and against Ryan Spawn. And I took him the last three times. I kid you not. I took him against Devin Clark. I took him against Jimmy Crude. And I went berserk against uh, Ryan Spawn. I just went hamish. And then I took Ryan Spawn recently on the rebound fight. So I love, you know, Anthony Smith. He's always down to fight, but as you can see, the man takes L's. Excuse me. Excuse me. 36 and 16. The man is not a stranger to taking L's, and unfortunately, there's a huge chance he's taking another L here because Magomed Ankalaev just beats him everywhere. He got the strength. He got the clinch. He got the wrestling. He got the submissions. He got durability. He got... The youth. He got less damage taken over the years. He got everything going for him. Give me the brother with a beard. Magomed Ankalaev for the W. I consider him a well-seasoned piece of the puzzle, which means he's a great parlay piece. He's on the brink of greatness in his own terms because he's about to be a champion very, very soon. He's taking out a, you know, a contender, Anthony Smith, and he's just getting so damn close for that title. Very, very close. Um, he just, he's like, he's right there. He's just right there. You know what I'm saying? So, um, Yuri Prohaska, Glover, watch out because Mago Maranka Live if not this year, next year, is knocking on the door and he's going to get the title shot. So whoever's the champion, you know, you know, I don't know. If he comes out here and he just puts on a work, maybe they're going to be tempted and book that Abu Dhabi. For, I don't know if they're going to do it. That's crazy, though. But anyway, they might save it for next year. You got to save that for next year. You know what I'm saying? You got to save it for 2023. Uh, you got to save that. <laughs> But yeah, you know, that pick is Magomed. Magomed all day. I'm not even thinking twice. It is what it is. We're going to go with Magomed. Sorry, Anthony Smith, but you, you're going to get your ass kicked. Most likely. Um, but I know your heart is going to be there. It's not going to be easy fight for Magomed. So he got to be prepared for war because, you know, Anthony's always game. He's always game. So that's just the case here. Magomed on Kalive, the future champion at the 205 division. And I don't care what anybody says. That's just my opinion. Next. Okay, guys. This is fight number 10. Uh, we got Pantoja. Alexander Pantoja. The Cannibal versus Alex Perez. You got a 24-5 and five fighter. Pantoja on a two-fight winning streak. Versus Alex Perez, who just suffered his loss. Uh, coming off three wins back to back to back. Five foot six to five. Uh, to five foot five foot five to five foot six, and a two and a half reach advantage for uh, Pantoja. This is a flyweight bout. I'm gonna favor Pantoja here. I think he's a good fighter. Um, they're both very good in my in my opinion. They're both very good. Uh, public perception: the 89 percent is on Pantoja, and I didn't. I was not cheating, guys. I really did not cheat. I did not uh, look at this. This is just me looking at it with you guys right now. Um, Pantoja, you know, he just, I think just a little bit more crispier, although he's older, but he's just more crispier. Uh, if you look at the wins, very good wins, uh, Manel Cap, you know, he was able to ride out with him and, uh, Brandon Royvel, he was able to submit this guy. So, you know, Brandon Royvel is usually the one who's doing the submission work. So go figure, uh, American top team, great team. Pantoja is the pick, man. I'm just, I'm going to ride with Pantoja. And I really, really, really going to be sad if he loses. But I'm, I'm backing Pantoja here, man. Uh, let's look at some numbers really quick. Um, we talked about Magomed. 
you know, significant striking accuracy, takedown. He wins in every category. That's why sometimes I don't look at these numbers, I can tell you. So, significant strike landed per minute. They're both going to be scrapping 4.24 to 4.62. Slight, slight, ever so slightly to uh, Alex Perez. Not, not significantly uh, anything. Uh, the accuracy, again, 57.55. Going to be favoring Alex Perez. Here's the takedown average, believe it or not. That's significant. 2.92 favoring Alex Perez versus 1.26. And um, the accuracy of that is 45.83% to 38.46%. And that is significant. Um, the take that, uh, the submit the submission average is pretty, really damn close here. Uh, in terms of numbers, you you can argue Alex Perez wins by the numbers and why is he a dog? I don't really know why he's a dog, but people are favoring uh, the Pento here. Uh, perhaps <clears throat> because Alex Perez is coming off a loss to Davies and Figueredo, but that was about a year and eight months ago, a real while back. Uh, before that, what did he do? Uh, J- Formiga, that was a good win. Jordan Espinosa, that was a good win. Mark De La Rosa, that was a good win. Uh, and prior to that, it was Joseph Benavides. He got you know knocked out. So... I'm going to go with Pentoho. I think he's just a little bit more crispier and a little bit more sound and a little bit more durable um, compared to Alex Perez. But anything can happen. This is a nice flyweight fight. It's going to be exciting. Um, I don't know if there's going to be a finish. This might go to full three rounds, and that might be the pick. How will the fight end? Decision, points. That might be just the play to, to, to think about, okay? But it's going to be a nice fight, and that's pretty much all I got to say about that fight. Let's move on. Oh, man. It would not be a Dallas card without Mr. Dallas himself. And that's, well, not Dallas. Houston, right? Derek Lewis, Texas Texas guy. Okay, Texas, man. Uh, 37 years old versus 30 years. Um, Sergey Poplovich, 6'3", 6'3". And he's giving up some reach because apparently Sergey Pavlovich has a really big reach. In fact, one of the biggest reaches in, at the heavyweight at 84. Um, I'm just interested to see something. I just want to check something. Okay. Mm-mm. Francis Ngannou has a reach of 83. So he is he's even beating... Uh, the champion here um, with an inch. So let's just talk about it, okay? Let's just talk about it. I mean, the king of heavy, uh, heavyweight knockouts is Derek Lewis. Um, I don't know if he's done done or he's just just got rocked. Um, I will tell you, I rewatched the last fight um, with, uh, with um, Tai Tuivasa. And yes, he got knocked out. But Derek Lewis showed us something. Derek Lewis showed us some wrestling pedigree. But I don't know if he's going to be wrestling Sergey Popovich. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but if you ask me per, on a personal level, uh, Derek Lewis actually showed some growth and development in the last fight. Uh, the only thing that Derek Lewis always had was his gas tank. Um, but he definitely got hurt in that fight against Tai Tuivasa. And it was the elbows in the clinch. Uh, so he wasn't protecting himself in the clinch. He was getting into the clinch um, from the top and from the reverse, and he was actually getting hit heavy. And it was one of those vicious elbows that you know got through, and he and it put out Derek Lewis. Unfortunately, um, I believe that fight I had over one and a half. So I was really happy with the grappling and and whatnot, but uh, just very sad because I was very very close, but so close, but no cigar. Um, of getting that W, and that was plus money play, by the way. So, yeah, I didn't know who's going to win that fight because I, I didn't want to bet against Derek Lewis, but I just didn't didn't have faith on, the, uh, on him. Uh, now, targeting this fight, again, it's going to be in Texas, and he has been losing in Texas. So here's a recent loss to Cyril Gaunt, and I believe that was Texas too. Let me just quickly look. Um... If my mind serves me right, it was for the interim heavyweight ch- championship. And it was Toyota Center 
Houston. It was actually in Houston, okay? Not even Dallas. This was in Houston. It's literally, it was Lewis' backyard, and he suffered a loss. And then tied to Ivasa event. Was this Houston? This was Toyota Center, Houston again, and he suffered a loss. So now he's in Dallas, um, Texas, you know what I'm saying? Um, still home state, still the home, uh, home court advantage. So when I was thinking about it, I was like, you know what? I'm going to fade the living shit out of Derek Lewis. But the more I started thinking, I'm like, yo, I don't think it's right. I think this is right. 51 to 49%. Um, that is pretty much where it is. It's a 50-50 fight because if Derek Lewis shows up that we know, Sergey Pavlovich is going to get knocked out. I mean, just rocked. But one thing Sergey ha has, man, he got speed. He's just fast with his hands. And if he starts unloading on the Black Beast, Derek Lewis has a way of just maybe calling it early. Uh, but you know what? I, I can't see Derek Lewis dropping the ball three times in a, in a row. In, the, in his home court state. I just cannot envision that. It's going to be very bad for Derek Lewis. His stock is going to go way down. And if Sergei Popovich wins, I mean, he's just going to be going up in rankings heavy. So, you know, coming off three wins, uh, Gom, Maurice Green, Shamil Abdurakhmimov, but Derek Lewis is just a big ass Big ass step up in competition, and he, none of those guys hit like Derek Lewis because Derek Lewis knocks you out. And he had Ty Tuivasa in a couple of moments, and he and just Ty was able to eat those punches, man. So hey, if 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 the chin checks out on Sergey, and you can see that he got knocked out by uh, Alistair Overeem, so if his chin healed up and he can weather the storm uh, from Derek Lewis, and Derek Lewis gets tired. That's when Sergey Popovich capitalizes, perhaps a little live bet situation, if you will. Um, I'm favoring Derek Lewis just ever so slightly because it's. I just cannot foresee Derek Lewis dropping the ball um, three times in a row, back to back to back. You know what I'm saying? So, with that being said, give me Derek Lewis, the Black Beast, and I'm really, really gonna be just. I'll cry if he loses because I really want to pull a trigger on Derek Lewis. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. Anyway, let's go. We are now. Uh, let me write this thing down. What is it? 5244. Okay. Brandon Morano versus Kai Cara France. Okay, guys. Um, yeah, this is a rematch. Brandon Moreno, the assassin baby, had um had Kai Kara Front's number the first time. But don't blink, because I think Kai Kara Front is going for it. But you know Brandon Moreno's gonna wanna wrestle. He's gonna wanna he's gonna wanna wrestle. I feel it. He might make it a very boring fight, man. He is the bigger guy here. Uh five foot seven to five foot four. 70 reach to 66.4. He has physicality advantage 100%. He's Mexican. He's so durable. He's so game. Uh, he sustained the loss to uh, Davison Figueredo. Um, yeah, I think Davison's probably not going to be cutting to 125. Uh, that's the word on the street. I don't know what's going on. With Davidson. In fact, I don't even know why this is a vacant title. But it is what it is. Now. I'm going to be rooting for Kai Car France. I have not officially put a bet on it. I want to hear the media day. I want to look at some videos. I want to see some embedded. I want to see the scales. I want to see the press conference. I want to see the whole shit bang, 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 and I'll make my ultimate decision. But I will be, as of right now, picking Kai Car France. I think it's his time. I think the Assassin Baby had a chance. He blew it. He was a champion. He lost it to Davis and Figueroa. 
And it's it's time to crown the new new breed, man. Kai Carter Franz, 29 years of age, uh, putting a lot of work. You know, that L against the brave Br Brendan Royval, in which he hurt Brendan Royval, but he got caught. Um, Bonterine KO, Cody Conrad, like I said, KO, and uh, a decision went against Askar Askarov. And I don't know how I feel about this because I actually was picking Askar Askarov there. So, yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. So, you guys make an ultimate decision. I'm leading Kai Kara Franz. Public perception is Brandon Moreno all day. So, don't be surprised if the underdog spoils your party, guys. Yeah. We are now officially at the main event. 526. Okay. Let's go. We are now. Juliana Pena versus Amanda Nunes 2. This is a rematch. Plus a thousand almost dog cashes. Last, when was this fight? Last, six months ago. Uh, six months ago. Wow. So fast, right? Time flew. Uh, cashes in plus a thousand. Plus a thousand. The Venezuelan vixen. Um... Did you guys think that was going to happen? Plus 700, plus 800, plus 900. I think at, at closing, she was plus 900. Some books had a plus 1,000. Did you ever think that? Did you ever think that Juliana was actually going to submit Amanda Nunes? Be honest with me because I didn't think so. I really laughed at that thing. Uh, but, yeah, Amanda Nunes disrespected Juliana Pena, paid the price. Suffered her loss in a long, long time. She was eating black caviar, playing with her baby. She forgot what a loss feels like. But now she's back. Because she talked some shit at the face-to-face -face in the um, Ultimate Fighter. She was talking to Julian. She's like, yeah, that's my belt. I want it back. So I saw some fire in her eyes. Uh, re re recent pictures. I don't see her playing with a baby. Because she was playing with a baby all day. She's not playing with a baby. She's putting in work, guys. And I believe she's going to knock out Juliana Pena. Or at least win unanimously. Uh, she's going to get her belt back, man. The Lioness. I believe she gets her belt back. Uh, but I don't know what she does after. I believe the good thing. She's 34. It's not like she's really old. Um, they might do a trilogy. Because if she beats a man, uh, Juliana Pena, it's only right for Juliana to fight for the for the trilogy. Um, at that point, if Amanda Lula, Nunes loses in the trilogy, then it would be like, okay, I'm gonna hang up my 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 gloves here, or at least not go for the for that and just I don't know retire or at least a featherweight champion because she's still a dub uh, a featherweight champion. Um, yeah, but this fight, man. I have Amanda Nunes. She is plus 300 of some books. Uh, let me look at the lifeline. Uh, Amanda Nunes is plus, I'm sorry, minus 275. DraftKings, BetMGM, and Caesars even has her a minus 300. So 3 to 1, a 3 to 1 favorite over here. So people still think highly i think highly of amanda nunes and i believe she's going to be a lot better prepared uh for juliana pena and i love julie but she's going to get her ass kicked she's going to get her ass smashed because that first round amanda nunes put it they, she put it on her but it was in that second round when she got hit uh by uh, by Amanda, I mean by Juliana. That's when Amanda started like like wobbling. So give me Amanda Nunes, and I'm gonna go for Amanda KO play. That's just my personal thing. She is so due for a KO. She hasn't knocked out anyone in a long time. Uh, you know, it's only right she gets submitted, and then she's gonna knock out Julia Pena. Then then no one can talk shit. Then you can plan the third fight and do whatever you want to do. Uh, but yeah. I'm going to be officially backing Amanda Nunes here. The Lioness, I think she's the GOAT. I st even though she took that L, everybody loses. But she is, what she's done, she is the GOAT. A t first female double champ, guys. I mean, that's just not easy to say. So, yeah. 
that's my rundown. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, comment down below. Make sure you give me that like. You know what I'm saying? Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Uh, if you appreciate the work that I just put in here, um, give me suggestions. I was able to finish it, you know, less than an hour here. I didn't want to bomb bombard you with some bullshit information. Just give you guys how it is straight to the point. Um, on that note, be safe. Your boy's going to be out. I want to squeeze in another video by Wednesday, probably giving you my, my best plays um, to target. Okay, doesn't mean you're going to have to play it, just at least to target. Um, yeah, and then I'm going to be on vacation. I'm probably going to be watching this on my phone in Panama, chilling. You know what I'm saying? And I am going to be taking Jocelyn Edwards because she's from Panama. You know what I'm saying? Because how can I root against someone not from Panama when I'm in Panama? I'm just saying. You know, I'm just keeping it real. But be safe. Play smart. Don't lose any units. Let's get some units. And remember that contest. Orion Kosi or Blood Diamond. Make a prediction. If you're on the right side, I'm taking you your names, putting in the pool, and I'm going to send you 100 bucks. So less people comment, the more chances for you to win. But, yeah, make sure you guys like and subscribe. It's really important. Let's, 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 let's go to, to massive work. I'm in the process of expanding my guest list once again, uh, making it a little bit more entertaining here. Uh, I'm going to be investing, now that I got some units on board, I'm going to be investing in some, you know, some upgrades, you know, yet again, as you can see, have have the new microphone, the setup and everything. But I'm going to do some some software upgrades here as well, uh, learning a few, you know, tricks and, and whatnot. And I'm going to bring you some good, good content, you know, moving down along. So make sure you stay with us. Battle Cage coming to you from New York City. You know how we do. Your boy science is out, bro. It's over. It's over. It's over. Till next time. Be safe, guys.